Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I want to see if Girl Defined is really as bad as the rest of YouTube seems to think. Now I've seen a lot of secular commentary channels kind of look at Girl Defined and say, you know, oh, we're not against religion or anything, but these girls are crazy. And I've also seen people in the comments saying, hey, I'm a Christian and I am so ashamed of these girls. So I figured this is something I wanted to look into. I wanted to see if the reason people were saying they were ashamed was actually because of what they were saying or if because these commentary channels are pointing these things out and saying, oh, that's cringy, so we feel like compelled to feel like they're cringy as well. So I'm wanting to look at it in two different pieces. One part, I want to look at just the content, just exactly what they're saying, not how they're saying it, not the way they come across, just what they are saying. Do I agree with their statements? And then the how they come across. Are they cringy? Are they genuine? Are they whatever? Those sorts of things. So while I know a lot of people really, really love to bash Girl Defined from head to toe, this is not that kind of video. I really want to be objective when I'm looking at this, and again, I'm going to state that this is coming from a Christian point of view. A lot of people have reviewed their videos and looked at their videos from a non-Christian point of view and picked it apart. So I want to see if this is something to actually be picking apart from the Christian standpoint. And I do think that is something that people should take into consideration. Girl Defined is aimed at Christian girls or teenagers, not at every single girl or teenager or secular girls and teenagers. So when people say, you know, oh, we're not really making fun of religion, but they make fun of the things they say that are Christian principles or Christian ideals, they kind of are, but don't realize it. And that's just because they're so used to hearing their own, you know, secular opinions and secular ideals being put throughout the media, throughout YouTube, throughout everywhere, that they think everybody thinks the way they do and everybody has those principles that they do. So whenever they're presented with a different idea, they're immediately going to think that's weird, strange, and crazy. So I want to see if some of these things really are weird, strange, and crazy, or <laughs> if some people are actually kind of confused because they aren't Christians and don't really get it, if that makes sense. All right, so I aimed to get videos that I did see other people make videos about, so that way we can look at what everyone is cringing about, what everyone thinks is so crazy, so weird, and so horrible about Girl Defined. So the first video that I looked at was why I waited until marriage to kiss, and I know a few people reacted to that one, and I'm just gonna very quickly summarize this. Basically, the one girl, Bethany, I think is her name, is waiting until marriage to kiss, and apparently her older sister, who is sitting next to her, also waited until marriage to kiss. I wouldn't do that, but I do appreciate that Bethany made it clear that that's her personal conviction and something she personally wanted to do and made it clear that that is not a biblical requirement because it indeed is not. So this is one of those things that's kind of like, okay, but I will say they weren't saying all Christians have to do it this way or anything like that. They did make it clear several times during the video that that is just something they wanted to do and something they said, you know, hey, if you want to consider it, consider it. I do think they were very excited and happy sharing about it. Again, I don't have that personal experience. I do think that's a little bit weird, but again, to each their own, that's really not a big deal. They're not forcing it on other people or saying that other people have to do what they did. The next video is six guys you shouldn't date, court, or marry. Now again, like I said earlier, I'm wanting to judge it based on the content of actually what they're saying and kind of separate that from how they come across, which I'll get into later in the video. But for now, I would like to say before they've even gotten into the different types of guys, they're trying to come off as like really fun and relatable for the girls and stuff. And it doesn't necessarily translate that way for me, but Putting that aside, let's start with guy number one. Okay, so guy number one that you shouldn't date, court, or marry is this, Mr. Talk. So I think this one's kind of fair. Honestly, if you don't want to be dating someone or I guess really eventually marrying someone who is just about the talk, you don't want someone who's just going to say all the right things and doesn't actually mean it. 
someone who's all talk and no action is always a thing you would want to look out for. And guy number two is Mr. Anger. Guy number two is who they call Mr. Anger, and that's someone who like blows up at every little thing all the time. And I agree that that is something you need to look out for. If they're blowing up over every little thing and cannot control their anger at all, that can really set you up for an abusive relationship if you stay there. So I think they need some time to work on themselves and learn how to manage their anger before they should really be in a relationship with people. That's my perspective. And guy number three that you definitely shouldn't date, court, or marry is Mr. Struggle. Mm. Now, we all have our struggles in life, right? But we're talking about here with Mr. Struggle is a guy who's struggling with big things, and he always says, I'm trying. I'll do better next time. I promise I'm going to overcome this sin. I promise I'm going to get better in this area. But as his track record continues, he never act mm. actually overcomes their struggles. So for example, maybe pornography, maybe irresponsible spending, maybe just not getting places on time yeah. ever, or really managing the relationships in his life or his respons responsibilities very well. Now we have guy number three, Mr. Struggle, which is Mr. What makes this video probably the most controversial, or he's the most controversial guy, whatever. And this is because <laughs> of how they put this. I think they meant something else, or I hope they meant something else, but basically, Yikes, this one, this one did not go over well. And they're basically saying if a guy's struggling over something and he doesn't basically overcome it, then he's not worth dating. And that's not necessarily fair. And then saying that it would be something along the lines of irresponsible spending or getting somewhere on time. I mean, Really? <laughs> is, that, is that a reason not to date somebody that they didn't get somewhere on time? Now, if they ghosted you all the time and said that they were on their way and then they never showed up, that's something to be irritated about and look out for. But for someone like, oh, they just don't get better at not being late. Really though? Like, I don't know. I feel like maybe they were just trying to go for some easier examples. I don't know. But that one probably was like the worst out of them all. It's okay if someone is going through something because we're all going through things and to say like you're not doing enough in that issue is stupid. But I think that maybe the point they maybe wanted to try to make, I don't know, would be that you probably shouldn't take people on to be your personal project, if that makes sense. So if they're going through something, you shouldn't be dating them or whatever to make them get out of it, if that makes sense. There's a lot of people who do this kind of thing. Like, oh, they're depressed, I became their girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, and then now they're gonna be not depressed. Well, what happens if your relationship is only based on their happiness, whether they're depressed or not? And if you break up, are they gonna be depressed? Are you gonna be stuck with them forever because you're the solution to their problem? So I can see where that might be an issue, but the way they worded it and the examples they used were really bad. So I don't really know where they're coming from there, but I would personally say this would only be correct if you're talking about taking on a relationship just to make someone your personal project. Number four is Mr. Obsessed. A lot of people gave them flack on this one as well because they wouldn't understand why a guy putting a you above God is an issue because they don't really believe in God, so why do they care, right? So this one is eh, on, on, on this one. I can see what they're saying. I think for the guy personally, it's not good for him to put a girl above God because if that girl becomes his God and she does something wrong, which she's going to do because she's a human being, he might get crushed. If, if she does something that hurts him, he might get crushed because his whole world revolves around her, right? So I can see that. But when we like people, we can come across as obsessive. So I think it's really important to define what we mean when we say obsessed. If they're like stalking you, it's kind of an issue. But in, in general, usually when you really like someone, your whole world kind of does revolve around them, to be completely fair. Guy number five is Mr. Pressure. I definitely agree with this one. I know a lot of people thought that this was just like, oh, someone putting you outside of your comfort zones. No. They were clearly talking about things that were pushing you into things that you do not feel are morally right, things that you are not ready for in the relationship. And really, I don't see why people were tearing this one apart because I think we should all agree that no one should feel pressured in their relationship to do things that they don't feel comfortable with. If they do not feel comfortable with doing a certain 
intimate thing, whatever that is, they should not be pressured into doing that. If you're in a relationship where someone is being really manipulative and saying that they're gonna leave you if you don't take it a step further and stuff like that, get out. You do not have to stay in that kind of thing. So there I do agree with them on it. Guy number six is Mr. Unsaved. A lot of secular people kind of got offended by this, but I can kind of understand this because there's really a fundamental disconnect that would be happening because if you take your faith seriously and the other person either doesn't believe in God or has a faith that is very contradictory to yours and they take theirs seriously, then you're not really going to be able to connect on that level and I don't think that's a good idea. It doesn't mean you need to look down your nose at the filthy heathen or something like that. But I do think that putting all of your emotions and everything into a relationship that ultimately you are not going to be able to connect on that particular level is not a, a bright idea. And then you also have people who try to date people to make them come to church and stuff like that. Don't do that. Okay, so this next video that I'm going to be looking at is eight reasons why we are not feminists. And I find this one particularly interesting because I know a few people have gone over it. It has a huge dislike to like ratio. Dislikes are insane on this, but they do make it clear in their intro that they're talking about modern feminism, okay? So they made it very clear they're cool with the equality with men thing, but they're not cool with what the current new wave or whatever it's called feminism movement is trying to push. And I saw the comments and they were all like, oh, you know, go back to your husband and ask him for permission to make this video. And don't you know you couldn't make this video without feminism? It's really interesting to me that because it's a Christian video, now you assume that these girls are not okay with any sort of feminism. Even though they literally just said that they're okay with the feminism that's about men and women being equal. But we have gajillions of feminist cringe videos out here on YouTube where people are pointing out the flaws with the new wave feminist movement where it is no longer about equality between men and women. Number one, you become your own God. As a Christian, and again, they're making videos for Christian girls and women, they're not wrong. And a lot of her wording also reminded me of the fat acceptance movement. I agree with them that current day new wave feminists do think that you have to agree with everything they say and agree with them basically being God or else sexism. And number two, Sexual liberation is praised. Again, we're coming from a Christian standpoint. For people who are secular, this is body shaming because girls should be able to do whatever they want. Look, girls can do whatever they want to, but from the Christian point of view, we put value on modesty and we feel that if you're out there flaunting every part of your body, that you don't really honor it that much. So a lot of this issue comes from different people's ideas of what modesty is, but she made the example of someone posing topless for the entire world to see. Obviously that's not really considered modest in any way. And they really want to push the idea that you should be like that. And in fact, modesty itself is honestly shamed. So we wanna play this game where it's like, oh, you're body shaming. Oh, you're shaming people if they wanna act like this. But if you watch their video on how to make things more modest, they get shamed for that. And number three, not all lives are valued. Women are the biggest proponents for life and women's rights and women's liberation and yeah. all of these things. But the crazy thing about the feminist movement, and honestly, very few mainstream yeah. feminists would disagree with this, is that women are all for abortion. Yes. Feminist is on the forefront of fighting for abortion. I know that for some reason, my opinion right now is not a popular opinion. But let me tell you right now, I do not support abortion. I understand that there are some situations that are exceptions. However, I do not support 
the ability of someone to walk into a clinic and be pressured by doctors saying, oh, well, did you plan to have that baby? You know, your mom might be disappointed or your dad, you know, we can just get rid of it. It never happened. That is not okay. It is not okay to end someone's life because it was inconvenient for you. And the fact that New York thinks it's okay to abort a baby moments before it leaves the woman's body, that is a problem and you are sick in the head if you think otherwise. So I completely agree with them that it is sad that women are the, at the forefront of moving to kill their own children. And number four, male leadership is despised. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest, there aren't a whole lot of women these days who are coming alongside of men, encouraging the leadership, championing them, saying, yes, you can do this. So I can see where this can kind of get a little bit muddy because People can get agitated about this. I know they're like talking about coming alongside men and encouraging them and stuff. And some people see that as saying that women are only supposed to support men, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's what they're going for or not. I don't agree with that. I do agree that men should take leadership roles and I think that women should take roles as well. And I think that it should be based on capabilities and basically who can meet the standard. Who is actually better for the job? It shouldn't be whether you're a man or a woman. It should be about who is actually better for the job. And to say that you should hire a woman instead of a man just because she's a woman is foolishness in my opinion. And it is also really horrible how much they have pressed to say that men are worthless, that men are just trash, that ha 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 a man thinks he can do something. Those kind of attitudes I don't I don't think are right at all and definitely do not align with the Bible. And number five, women are told that we are better than men. You yeah. know, we say it's a fight about equality, but when you listen to the voices of feminism, yeah. so many women aren't just saying we want to be equal with men. They're really saying we are better than men. It's you know down with patriarchy, down with men. It's time for women to take yeah. over, women to reign, women to rule. Now number five is really kind of what I was just talking about towards the end of number four, and that is women really thinking that they are better than than men, not equal to men. And really this is a major thing in the current feminist movement. It is not about equality anymore. It is about trying to raise women above men and put down men and say that they're worthless and useless and worth nothing and that women are everything. And the world is all run by women. It's only women. Women are the best and men are the worst. And I think that is really, really messed up. We are both equally important. Number six, homemaking isn't valued. Believe it or not, but back in the day, people actually used to value homemaking. They actually used to highly value the role of a wife and the role of a mother. And those that whole role of homemaking, wife and motherhood was upheld. Now, a lot of people took this as them saying, like, you shouldn't have a place in any other, you know, you shouldn't have some leadership role or whatever. I don't think that's what they were saying. I do think there was a little bit of irritation <laughs> towards the idea of going out and having a job. I think that homemaking should be as equally as important, if not more in some situations, than going out and getting a job. I think that women are given a very unique role and to say that you aren't worth anything because you don't go to a job that gives you a paycheck is really awful. I think that we should honor people who are at home making a home and are looking after children and are doing those sorts of things as well. I don't think it's fair to sit there and spit on them for doing that kind of work. And number seven, unique gender differences are ignored. We're honestly both really offended by this because God created men and women to be equally valuable, but purposely different. Number seven is about the idea that they want to make men and women equal and the same. So not just equal status, but the exact same. They have the exact same purpose, the exact same abilities, the exact same everything. And again, I think that's just not true. Even if you look at the physical body, a man is not physically capable of carrying a child and a woman is. We are made to do different things, but we are equally important and I agree with that. Number eight, the victim mentality is encouraged. And number eight was about pushing the victim mentality. And again, this is something that the feminist movement of today does get criticized for a lot. They are victims of the patriarchy, of society, of whatever else. And I do appreciate that they pointed out that they're not talking about victims of abuse and victims like who are actually victims. Obviously, 
we should stand by and support people who have gone through things like that. But what they were saying is a valid point where they try to say, because you are a woman, you are a victim of this society of whatever, which again, just breeds this stupid mentality between people and it's really ugly. So I do agree with them on that. So to my surprise, on the feminist video, I pretty much agreed with them on the whole thing. So I wanted to go ahead and look for a video that may have been more recent that someone else kind of did a video on. And I found a video done a couple days ago, I think, I don't know, pretty recently by Rachel Oates. And she is an atheist and she has a lot of commentary on Christian things and then other things that just, you know, she finds absurd and stuff like that. And some of her videos I really like. So I saw her put out a video called Girl Defined Calls Assault Victims Broken. And I was like, yeah, that's something I would not be okay with, so let me go see what she's talking about. So I watch her video, she has the clip of it in there, and then she gives her commentary. And so I wanted to kind of tell you my thoughts on that. She writes, Dear Girl Define, I'm sure you probably won't read this, but it feels good to let it all out to someone who would have mm. some good advice, and I would really appreciate it if I did get a response. Here's your response. Here's your response. <laughs> I was raised in a Christian household, but as I started getting into my teen years, I found I was straying further and further away from God and his word. Mm. I've done things with my boyfriends in the past with and without consent. Mm. I've been really wanting to get back into my spirituality and relationship with God for a while now, but I'm not sure how to even start or if it's even possible with the things I've done in the mm. past. Is it even possible to repurify yourself from sex outside of marriage? And if so, what does that look like? I'm terribly lost right now and would really appreciate a response or even a video talking about these topics or talking about situations mm. that people who haven't always been Christians might run into. Okay, so let's talk about the one thing that stands out to me in this letter. The line that talks about how I've done things with my boyfriends with and without consent. I think this is her saying, I was raped, I was sexually assaulted. And I think it is, you know, a bit of a, not a cry for help, but I think it's her saying like, I need some reassurance here. Let me know I'm not in the wrong. It's so important for people who've been through this to know that it is not their fault. They did nothing wrong. If someone did something to you without your con consent, regardless of your background, regardless of what you've done before, regardless of if you've done sexual things with them before with consent, regardless of your religious background, if someone does something to you without your consent, it does not make you bad, it does not make you dirty, it does not make you impure, it does not make you a sinner. You are not at fault. First thing I want to say to you and to any of us who have experienced sexual impurity, which that's me, that's you, that's everyone. None of us are perfectly pure and that's the whole point of why Christ died. Yeah. We are all sexually broken. We're all impure. We all struggle with us. We all sin and need to repent of that sin before it just, God. It's different ways. It's you know? just in it's different, different ways, different, ways. different situations, different seasons, yeah. different sin, but at the bottom, at the heart of it, we yeah. are all impure and that is exactly why Christ died because he wants to forgive us yes. of our sins. He died on the cross, not not because we're perfect girls, but because we're <laughs> sinful girls. Yeah. That is why Christ died, so that he could forgive our past and redeem our future. This is such an unnecessary kick in the stomach for this poor girl. Let's put all the consensual stuff that she's done aside, right? They're literally saying, okay, you were sexually assaulted and that makes you a sinful girl. You are the reason why this God that you believe in and worship had to die. You're impure. You're sexually broken. These are horrible, horrible words and phrases to use about anyone. Never mind a victim of sexual assault. Screw that. It's horrible. Here's the thing for everyone to remember. If you or someone you know has been the victim of sexual assault, you or they are not broken. So the first thing I want to address with this is that I think that Rachel is right that she, the girl that wrote in was trying to say more when she said that there was consensual and non-consensual things going on in her relationship. And I think Girl Defined I don't know if they purposefully glossed over it. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they were just reading it quickly and figured, oh, this is just a thing someone feels guilty for having sex before marriage. So I think they really should have slowed down to pay attention because that changes the entire tone of her write-in request and their response should have been adjusted accordingly because Rachel is right. An abuse victim? 
It is not their fault. That does not make them sinful. That does not make them broken. And that does not make them dirty. It is not their fault when something happens to them that it was not consensual. So I do want to make that very, very clear. I think that Girl Defined really could have used from taking a minute to read that again to realize that she might be saying she feels guilt or she feels maybe dirty and impure because of things that also happened that were not consensual. And she should not have to feel guilty. She should not have to feel like she has to ask for forgiveness for things that were not consensual. If she was assaulted, if she was harmed in any way, anything happened to her that was not consensual, she should not have to feel guilty about that at all. And so I 100% agree with what Rachel says there. However, Coming from a Christian perspective, I understand what they're saying, and since that girl is also, I'm assuming, Christian, then she's going to understand their response better than Rachel did. So Rachel thought that Girl Define was basically saying, wow, you're a terrible human being, you're broken, you're dirty, and you're the reason Jesus died, you horrible human being. But that's really not what they were trying to say. Again, I'm pretty sure they just completely missed the non-consensual part. So they're just answering like, oh, well, this is just someone feeling bad about having sex before marriage. So what they were trying to say was that Christ died for everyone's sins, right? So what they were trying to say was, if we didn't have sins, there was no reason for Christ to die. If we were perfect, there was no reason for Christ to die, okay? So where Rachel makes it seem like they're guilting her and calling her broken and saying it's, you know, her fault that Jesus died, how horrible are you? That is not what's happening here. What they're trying to say is, look, God knows you're going to mess up and do things that are not biblical and doing things that are outside of his will. There's going to be times you miss the mark. And that's why he died for you. He died for all of us to wash us clean again. That's what they were trying to say. So Rachel kind of maybe coming from the atheist perspective thought that's what they were trying to say. I don't think that they were trying to shame her, but I appreciate Rachel coming to the girls of a defense in the case that, you know, that's what they were doing, but that's not what they were doing. I think that they definitely just kind of overlooked it. Uh, I don't think they should have. I think that it would have benefited them greatly, again, to take a step back and realize what's happening, and I think that they could have handled that a lot better than they did. Okay, so now here is my general impression of Girl Defined. This is now the part that everybody's been waiting for, and uh, are they cringy? Sometimes. Yeah, they are kind of cringy sometimes. And it is not because of what they're saying. So a lot of people are trying to attack them for what they say, with the exception of a few things that I've already kind of talked to you about. With the things that I do agree with, sometimes they can come across cringy because they kind of put off this like, I am perfect and we're so great and wonderful and perfect and everything is bright and bubbly and <laughs> Okay, like don't fake laugh. Okay? It's okay to be genuine. And I think a lot of problems with Christian people is that they are literally afraid of being genuine. And I think that's another thing that really causes this cringy disconnect with Girl Defined is that they want to hit these hard topics, but they also want to talk to you like you're a 10 year old and in a really kind of condescending manner. So again, I don't think they're trying to do that. I think they're just trying to reach their audience, but if the internet is any indication, they're not doing a great job. So maybe for one video, take away the peppy music, take away the bright and fun and cheery and we're so happy about everything, and just be real for a minute. Because what people are sensing from you is that I'm on camera, I have to keep smiling, and you're doing this kind of almost like acting agreement. So like when you're talking to each other, you're like, yeah, yeah but I don't, no one feels like it's genuine. If, if it was you genuinely be like, yeah, I, I agree with that, people wouldn't be so irritated by it, but it's that you don't look like you genuinely feel the way that you're acting or making on your face. So then when you're trying to say something serious and you go, yeah, and that's really bad, it's just something about your tone of voice and your expression that makes you come across really insincere, and that's what's leading to the, the cringe, as they say. And I think that it would really, really benefit you to meet people 
at their level. Don't talk to people like they're stupid little 10 year olds. Like girls, <laughs> like no one, no one does that. No one does that. And if you're wanting to reach people, just be who you are and be honest. Don't talk with the perfect Christianese sounds and try to be this perfect image because look, we are serving a God who knows that we're imperfect. And you've, you've even said that, right? You've said, you know, we have things we struggle with. We have things we deal with. And sometimes I think that Girl Defined is struggling with this kind of religious issue where they have to be perfect and it does come across in videos. I will say that they don't say that and I appreciate that they don't try to put that there, but I think that they would so much, so, so much benefit from being able to drop the I am going to be this perfect role model to be able to say I'm a human being, I need Jesus just like you do, this is how the Bible tells us to get through these things and I understand if you've fallen because we all have and a lot of times they can come across as I'm perfect you know I didn't kiss my husband until I got married and I wear my clothes a certain way and I do this and this and this and look we're taught a lot of times that we are here to be an example so it's scary to let someone see any sort of flaw or fault but I think that is really what is causing so much of an issue with Girl Defined and why so many people are not able to defend them is because they come across as if they are perfect and as if they're always happy and cheery and and they just don't really seem genuine, you know what I mean? So I'm not here to roast them, I'm not here to basically say awful things about them, but I just am trying to give an honest, objective review. So that is what my review is. From those videos, I disagree with some of what they say. A lot of it, I agree with what they're saying, just not their delivery. A lot of it could be so much improved if they worked on their delivery, and again, with the whole part that Rachel Oates pointed out, it really could have helped them to slow down and realize maybe what the core of the message was and not have just kind of picked it and been like, oh, hey, this is about sexual sin, this will make a great Q&A, but realizing the non-consensual part, because we do have to face some of these issues and I think it's important to address them. So anyway, is Girl Defined really that bad? No, it's really not that bad. Is it great? No, <laughs> but it's really not as bad as YouTube seems to think. And I think that's really because they're coming from a secular worldview. So there is my really long review of Girl Defined. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. And if there's any specific videos you want me to look at or channels you want me to look at and look into, let me know in the comments below as well. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. I upload to this channel every Saturday. So if you want to see anything to do with Christian topics in any sort of way every Saturday, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a video from me. I hope you're all having a wonderful week and see me in my next video. Bye!